Jesus' name. And I want to read a couple of scriptures here, about three of them, and it's Matthew 18 and 18 through 20, I think it is. And it says this right here. It says, Verily I say unto you that whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. I want to take the two directions to start with, on earth and heaven. Uh, directly proportional to here and there. Okay? And that prayer is the really only thing the Scripture talks about that gives us the opportunity to be here and there at the same time. Okay? So when we come in together to pray, we are actually joining earth and heaven together. We're in connection. Well, that's important because a lot of times we pray and we're praying because we don't feel a connection when prayer is the connection, so we don't want to wait to pray until we necessarily feel like it. And when I say feel like it, of course you should pray when the Holy Spirit within you makes you quote-unquote feel like it, but a lot of times your mind will not feel like it, your emotions won't feel like it, your body won't feel like it, okay? So uh, whatsoever things you shall what? That shall be bound in heaven, and uh, whatsoever things shall be loosed on earth, and in heaven, so the earth and the heaven. And uh, then I want to take you here where it says, And again I say unto you, so he's continuing the thought, that if two of you, that's real important. It's not, when it says two of you, it doesn't say you and the television evangelist. It doesn't say you and the super spiritual person somewhere, but it says if any two of you, on a local level where you are, amen? It's not that if you can get and I've got a certain uh, ministry that if you want prayer, I mean, you call them. P miracles happen when they pray. And I don't even like their ministry. I don't watch them. I'm telling you, if you want somebody to pray for you, you need to contact them. And uh, really, every time we've ever had to have a miracle, one has happened. But see, now, if you're not careful, you put your faith in. If you, if, if you can get them to pray, it's not about getting them to pray. I agree with them because I have confidence. Okay? But it doesn't say it has to be a superstar. It says, If any two of you shall agree on earth as touching what? Anything. That they will... Well, anything that they shall ask, it shall be what? Wow. For them of my Father, which is in... Heaven, the joining of heaven and earth. You don't know how much easier it is for me to preach without doing the music first. You have no idea how much easier it is for me. Uh, I love the music, but it's so much easier for me to come in focused on what I'm supposed to say. That's why I'd love to have a worship leader. I don't even care if it's bad worship. I used to care. I don't even care anymore. I would just like to be able to come in and just do what I'm clear-minded to do so I don't have to think of 40 different things. But we're two or three of what? Together in my name, that's one of our scriptures, isn't it? Yes. There I am in the midst of them. Now I want to come back, we're going to look at the verses, but I want to show you what the Lord's ministered to me this morning. He wanted me to minister to you that, that when we talk about praying and agreeing in prayer, we're not getting to together to decide if it's possible. Now, how many times do we get together to pray and somebody says, I want you to agree in prayer with me. And the first thing our mind thinks is, is what? Is that possible? Huh? Y'all too spiritual to admit that? Now, I didn't say you wouldn't nod your head with people. I didn't say you wouldn't go ahead and pray with them. But do you, does it not cross your mind that, that the very first thing is, well, is that possible? Huh? I'm the only one that thinks that way. Well, uh, you know, if they came up and wanted their, their dog had been dead five days and they wanted their dog to come back alive and they want you to agree with them, it's quite possible that this could be the first thing that crosses your... Yeah. Or disbelief. What? Okay. Huh? okay, like it would be a little more difficult, I guess. I can't agree with you. Let's see, what, but see, but, but now listen, see, so, so we have... We, see, so one of the first things we do is we subconsciously start to analyze is this possible they want their loved one to be saved 
And your first thought is, well, uh, well, okay, I'll agree with you, but we're not called to decide whether that person has got a free will, not a free will, whether they're going to turn, whether they're going to burn. Is it possible for them to turn? You know what I mean? Is it possible that they're all there? Hospice has come in, and they're on their stage four, and hospice has come in, and so and so's wanting you to pray, and you're God didn't ask us to decide if it was possible. So that's what our problem is. We decide whether it's possible or not before we get together in His name, and He's in the when He's in the midst, all things are possible. But see, we're not called to be a deciding thing to start with. We know. We're not getting together to decide if it's possible or if it's probable. And you know you're shocked as anybody when some of these prayers get answered. And you go, I didn't think I had a shot in the world. But you disagreed with uh, nobody else but me will hold their hand and say that's absolutely true. Because so many times the, uh, everybody wants you to agree with them and they're not even in agreement with what? is going to happen. But there, it's more of a hopeful prayer. We talked about fearful prayer Wednesday night. Uh, we have hopeful prayers. We just kind of hope it'll work out. We get enough people to agree with it. Maybe it'll work. But we're not decide decide if it's possible, if it's probable. And this is a big one for some of y'all, if it's practical. I mean, y'all right there shaking your head. <laughs> right now, they're wanting supernatural debt reduction. And you know they spend like going out of style. And they ain't quitting anytime soon. And so you're agreeing with them for supernatural debt reduction. You're really practically thinking, there ain't no chance of that happening in any way, shape. Okay? So is it practically possible? Is it practical that they're going to come off that bed of affliction? Is it possible? Well, with God, all things are possible. Is it probable? Probably not. Oh, this is a lovely morning start. Well, it, uh, is it practical? Well, I don't know. They've done got the cemetery picked up. They've done got that done. They've, they've prepared everything. You know, the food's cooked. Let's not mess this up. Now, see, this is what we mean. Is it possible? But I want you to know that resurrection is not, is not practical when you pray for it. It's not probable because it doesn't happen all the time, but it's definitely what? Possible. Possible. And we've said resurrection. We're talking, when I say resurrection, I'll say, you know, somebody that's, that's on their deathbed or somebody's just passed away. And we'll talk ourselves out of it in five minutes and we'll say they're in a better place. If I was there, I wouldn't want anybody to bring me back. See, so we say things. So is it practical? Well, they've done went through it once. Why well, get them back and have them die again next week? Come on in. We started early this morning. Not because of time change, but because I didn't get no music going. That got us started a little earlier. But but it's really not practical. But God does it. Salvation is possible, but it's not practical. And it's not probable. If you don't believe it, look in the mirror. Would you believe you would have? There was a time in your life it didn't look practical or proper to you. Healing is the same thing. It is, is it possible? See, God didn't ask us to decide if it was possible when you pray for somebody to get healed. He's not asking you to decide if it's possible or if it's probable or if it's practical because why should I pray for their lungs when they're going to go back to smoking? See, this is how people think. Is this okay so far? Right, now I want to take you over to the Scriptures and I want to show you a couple of things about the Scripture because it's just a really good Scripture and I've been in it for several days. And I enjoy it. Now, it's almost like, should I even share it this morning? It's pretty big. All right. Where'd I go with it? All right. And I'm going to just use this right here. It says, to start with, we're going to use 18. We're going to emphasize 19, and we'll use 20 a little bit. But he says unto you, I want you to know that he's talking to us. And he says, whatsoever you will what? Yeah, I wonder why it's not very big. It should be bigger than that. Uh, whatsoever. So we want to look at whatsoever for a minute. And uh, just to make sure that it really means whatsoever. And it does. But we want to make sure it makes much, long, whatsoever, all, as long as. So that's a pretty good thing if you can say as, if you can pray as long as, whatsoever. So it's this huge place. 
as many as much, great, like in how many, the number of it, uh, got all these things. Uh, and of course, it's used for whatsoever, whethersoever, wheresoever, while, whoever, whosoever. It's got all these things on it, which we use, whosoever uh, believes shall be saved. It's all these things, but it's to the great extent. Is that okay? And so that's half of the word. Half of the word is that, and the other half of the word is because it's a compound word. The other half of the word is uh, whatsoever, right? There we go. The bottom part of it, maybe. See, I punched my finger in, in that other spot there. And then it's here, it's got... Can we get up here a minute? Can you see where we're going with it here? It's whatever, and this one here emphasizes the whomever. So it's whatever for whomever. It's quote-unquote anything for any body okay and uh any case i like that uh whatsoever whosoever whomsoever all those type of things whithersoever is a complicated old-fashioned word but it basically means any place anytime okay so this is on the practical about whosoever whatsoever you shall do what here now bind. we're going to bind now, we don't get to bind much nowadays. Braid stuff, we braid stuff, but whatever you want to bind. And bind is a simple word. It means to put it into bonds or knit together. Is that what that says? Uh, to knit or to tie. Now, Paula makes great things. She makes the animals, she makes blankets, she makes everything. And I think of knitting as little old lady stuff, but the Bible thinks of knitting as a bunch of knots put together. Isn't that funny? And so the Bible says that whatsoever you shall bind, whatever you will tie up, whatever you'll grab a hold of, whatever you'll refuse to allow uh, to have freedom, Amen? In a situation, whatever you'll bind. Notice it means to bind, to fasten with chains even. So when we're talking about coming together and praying and whatsoever you bind on earth, whatever you chain up on the earth, look at this one here, to throw into chains. The Bible talks about taking every idle thought captive. You know, it talks about doing that. We throw it into chains. Of course, it's a metaphor. It's used... When Satan bound that woman that was bent over for 18 years. That's the same word. That where he had her bent over so that she couldn't do anything. He used a demon to do it. The demon was the chain. The devil was the one doing the binding. And the demons, he's separate. The devil's not a demon. He's the devil. And he, the demon was sent to bind the woman up. And Jesus came and loosed her. And the demon went where? Went out. Amen. It went away. And notice what is notice this whole idea here. Uh, that's, that's a powerful word. Uh, so the woman couldn't stand up because she had been <laughs> bound. Oh, that's a powerful word. So we want to use that one and, and we want to back up here and notice that whatsoever you bind on the earth, whatever you put into chains, whatever you paralyze on the earth, Amen? Whatever you hinder on the earth is going to be what? We know the rest of the story in just a minute. Shall be what? Bound in heaven. It's going to be paralyzed from heaven. Do you see what we're saying there? It's going to be in chains. I just love that thought where the devil's going to be put in chains for a thousand years and thrown in the bottomless pit. You're going to be bound. Amen? So when we talk about praying, we want to realize that, that we are literally putting the problem in chains you see what we're saying so if somebody says uh, that we're going to bind we're going to gather together we're going to whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven all right so say you want say you're dealing with a nicotine situation okay I didn't say you were but say you were because uh, so we use nicotine for an example definitely a demon people don't act like it is it is and uh but verily i say that if you bind that nicotine addiction that nicotine demon where 
That's in my realm. That's here. Then God's going to do the same thing what? He's going to back up whatever you do on earth. He's going to back it up from heaven. But now if I think binding is nicotine addiction, I think, well, I just bind you in the name of Jesus. I take it lightly. Amen? Well, there ain't nothing feminine about grabbing a darn thing and putting chains on it. You know so in your mind, you need to get these ideas. Here, I'm taking big old chains, and I'm wrapping it around that addiction that's trying to kill my loved one, and I'm not praying little tiny prayers. I'm taking chains, and I'm binding that thing on the earth. And my, while I'm doing that on the earth, God is binding its power from heaven. Is that a word? All right, so let's use depression for a moment. So depression is attacking you, or it's attacking someone you love. When you say, I bind depression in the name of Jesus, is more than a religious phrase. What it is, is, is you're taking these chains. Hmm. Oh, man. And you're wrapping depression in something so it can't stand up. Yeah. See, that woman was bound over, wasn't she? Yeah. And she couldn't stand up. Now, depression, it's still there for a moment, but it can't do what it wants to do. You see what I'm saying? It can't suicide spirit. You bind that spirit in the name of Jesus. You're putting heavy chains. Amen. And somebody says, Well, did I have to bind it more than once? Well, if you're going to knit one of those blankets, how many times do you have to bind them things? That's it. You keep it's a process, isn't it? Every time it moves, you bind it. Amen. So see, every, and you're praying and somebody else is praying and it's like chain mail. Back in the night days, they had part of their armor was chain mail. It was, real, it was, it was very dense, but it was little links of chain and for their protection. But see what you're saying, when I bind depression or discouragement or suicide, and, and, and it might still squall, it might still ball, but it's bound up. You see what I'm saying? There's a huge difference between it disappears and it's bound. That woman was bound 18 years, but she could shuffle. Yeah. But it was limited. Now, see, the person has a free will. They have to exercise their free will, but you can bind up what is tormenting them in Jesus' name so it cannot do what it wants to do to them. Amen? Or what it wants to do to me. Amen? So we bind it in the name of Jesus, and, I, and we want God to do it first, but that's not the order. The order is you bind it on earth, earth and it's bound in. And I want... All right, so we're dealing with pain. Pain in our body. Uh, we'll say that one first. Then we'll do pain in someone else's body. There's pain in my body. A lot of times I'll just say, I bind you in the name of Jesus. Pain go out in the name of Jesus. That's one of my favorite phrases because I don't like pain. And it leaves. But sometimes there's pain in somebody else's body and I can't make them do what I do. Because they think in this process that if God didn't want me to hurt, He would stop it from there. But you have to stop it from here. That's a, even getting saved, God's willing, but I have to get saved from here. The moment you decide to ask Jesus in your heart, here, they rejoice in heaven, there. So we ought to realize that it starts, oh, it's so contrary to what I want to think. I want to think that it starts in heaven, and I just receive it. And that's true, you can receive it. But notice it says, whatever you will bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. So if I can't get in that person, I can bind that pain with great big chains so that it can't hurt them like it wants to. So it ain't got freedom to torment them so that they don't want to live and they want to give up or they want to go back to their uh, pain pill addiction or whatever. You see what we're saying? So we bind I'm just hung on binding this morning. I want you to catch that binding. So, so you're dealing with other people and they're coming out of addictive and painful situations and you can't change their life for them. You can't crawl into them. That's God's job. That's the Holy Spirit's job. But I can sure bind with heavy chains the confusion. Whew! The rejection. 
that's been operating in their life, making them so miserable they want to kill themselves. See what we're saying? So we're binding it. And the moment we start to bind it in the name of Jesus, heaven moves and it... That's a powerful word. Whew! Now we're going to do something else now. So whatsoever you bind on earth is bound in heaven and whatsoever you shall... Oh, loose. Loose is good. Come on, loose. There we go. Whatsoever you shall loose on the earth. Whew! Ah! Check loose out here. To loosen, of course. So we got two different bindings going on. We saw a moment ago that the devil bound that woman for 18 years. Did he not? Our job is to bind the thing that's doing the binding. The next thing is to loose the thing that's been bound. You see what I'm saying? Jesus did both. He rebuked the devil. And he loosed that woman and healed her and she stood up and made everybody at church upset because he did it on the Sabbath. Uh -huh. And it's funny, isn't it? Didn't do it the way it's supposed to be done in their mind. But notice it means to break it up. So, uh, so if you're dealing with constant... Uh, oh, give me a... Uh, well, let's catch a phrase. Now help me, Lord. I, can't, I know what I want to say, but I can't get the phrase to come out. Sinus congestion. We use sinus congestion for a moment. Chest congestion. All these kind of attacks from the enemy. When, when you lose that thing, it means to break it up. What's, that, what they all, what's the medicine supposed to do? Break it up. So you see the idea that you might be feel like you're just in concrete. You might feel like your feet are in concrete, your hands are in concrete, but yet when you lose somebody in Jesus' name, it, it does what? It breaks it up. It destroys. It dissolves what's holding them captive. You're going to, be, you're going to have to walk in binding and loosing to do the work of the kingdom because people are bound. And you're going to have to bound what's binding them so that you can loose the person. Let's see, do we get that now? Yeah. So here's somebody here, they're bound by nicotine. Now, at, with the devil's got them bound by nicotine, he's got their free will so wrapped up that they feel like it's their desire, that they want to smoke till they die. He's convinced them that with, on an oxygen tank, they have to have another cigarette. And I'm not preaching against cigarettes, I'm using that to show the, the, the demonstration. And that was an old song years ago. Smoke, smoke, smoke that cigarette. Smoke, smoke, smoke it if you smoke yourself to death. Tell St. Peter to Golden Gate he's just going to have to wait because you've got to have another cigarette. That was what it said. Yeah, he's just going to have to wait because I'm going to have one more. And, and all the time it's destroying the person. And so you can't argue with them. They're not going to change. But you can bind the thing. And then you loose the person's free will because it ain't their free will to smoke. They're, 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 they don't even realize what their free will is. They don't want to be that sin. They don't want to live in that sin. But they're bound up to the place where they've confused it with them. But you can set them free. Okay, You can loose them. You can dissolve to unloose. Look at this in here. To melt. Now, this, we're not just talking addictions. We're talking in every situation. That, that the thing that holds us back is we look at somebody that's been bound a long time and we say, well, I don't know if it's very probable that that woman's going to be able to stand up straight. She's been bound over for 18 years. And that other woman, she's been to all them doctors for 12 years and she ain't got a bit better. Besides that, she's unclean. Can't even get her to church. It wasn't probable. Okay? It wasn't very practical. It wasn't very probable or practical to tear a hole in the roof and lower a man that was paralyzed down in front of Jesus. Huh? But guess what happened? In all of those cases, they all got well and they all got free because they, did, wasn't, they didn't get hung up on what was possible because with God all things are possible. But if you're waiting on God to do it first, you're still going to be sitting there. Well, that's, I, we'll, we'll say it one more time. In another way, Jesus didn't go outside of the house and heal the man. They took him on the roof, dug a hole in the roof, lowered the man down into the thing, and Jesus said, oh, what about that? I'll just forgive your sins. 
because which is easier to forgive his sins or to heal his body. But he said, so that you'll know that I've got the power to forgive sins, I'm going to show you I'm just going to heal his body. Now we think the opposite. We think, oh, he can heal sins, but will he heal their body? He can forgive sins, but notice to him, he just flat loosed them. Dissolved. Have I spent too much time on loosening? Because we're going to use debt in a minute. Supernatural debt reduction. And you say, well, that's not very... It's possible, but I don't know if he'll do it for them. I don't know if he'll do it for me. I don't see how it could happen in my life. Sometimes it's not very probable. Just look at us. And it's not very practical because I, if I help my addict friend out, he's just going to need more money tomorrow. And you know God knows I'm just like an addict if I really be honest. And I just spend and spend and spend until I can't spend no more. Because I have to because I'm in the cycle. And how am I ever going to get out of the cycle? You bind the thing on earth. Then God backs it up in heaven. Amen? Then you loose yourself from the prison of debt Ooh, on the earth and God bounds it. He looses it from... Do you see the difference? Ah, uh, okay. Okay, where are I then? Because we ain't got to the good part. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And of course, you know, earth means earth, right? We do have to prove to you it means earth. It really means earth. It really does. It means here and now. That's what it means. It really does. It means the a region, a state, the whole, the terrestrial globe. I mean, it means the earth, the ground, the country, the earth, the world, where your feet are right now. That tells you you have authority to bind and loose like Jesus said because your feet are on the ground. You have an authority to bind things on earth that you won't have an ability to do from heaven because it starts on earth and it doesn't start in heaven. God's willing from heaven, but prayer, that's why prayer is a partnership because it's earth and heaven. Whatsoever you desire when you pray, that's on the earth. Well, that's my other verse. We'll get into that in a minute. Uh, but now notice this. It says that if two or three of you shall what? Agree. Agree. Now, I'm going to say it again. It says unto you if two. A two literally means... That's what it means. It literally means two. It really does. It means do. Like dual or duet. And so it's what you got. It's got two. And it means what? Two. It means both of you. So many times people want you to agree with them in prayer and one of you ain't even praying. It means both of you. It doesn't mean somebody come pray for me. It means, it says if two. So you don't have to have 1,500 or 10,000. One will put 1,000 to fly the Bible says. Two puts 10,000. If you can get you and the person you're praying for to agree. Huh. If you can get just you and them. Or you and your prayer partner. If you can get just two. And there's always me and him. And there's him and... You see what I'm saying? We get to two or three, but this is just two. I've only got to get three. Just two. And this is important uh, because it's, it's not like it's impossible. If two of you, I don't know how many times I've been healed, just because we pray this prayer, me and my wife, and she may not even believe it works. I have no idea, but we know it works for us. She can pray for me, and I get free just instantly. Uh because I know the scripture says it didn't say if two super grown people, two super spiritual people. I mean, it works at three o'clock in the morning when you you wake up and you just you hurt real bad on your shoulder, or you got a Charlie horse running down your arm and down the side of your back. It was last night. I didn't wake her up. I lay there and suffered because I wasn't going to wake her up. I knew if I woke her up, she she as soon as she'd let touch me, I'd get healed. I knew that, but I didn't want to wake her up again. I done woke her up for something else. But if two of you will what? Agree. Where at? See, I'm not trying to get somebody in heaven to agree with me. You dead relative. A saint. Now, you see what I'm saying? A healing evangelist is passed on. An angel. It says, if two of you shall agree on. As touching. That's a powerful word. That they shall ask, it will be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. If you take notes, I want you to take a note on this word done when you get a chance because right. that is a powerful word. But if any two of you shall agree, and I want to show you agree. I usually use just the short version of it and call it <laughs> harmony. 
but it's more than harmony. But it does mean har harmonious. I will get it here. It does mean uh, whoa, 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 whoa. harmonious. In other words, it means in accord to be suitable to concur. Now, when you sing and somebody sings in harmony, they may not even sing the same part. I ain't good at that, but I know there's high part and low part. I, I know a quartet sings in different parts, and you could explain that. You could explain that better than I can explain that. It doesn't mean you all say the same thing in the same tone. Does it? Okay. Us that can't sing, they tell me to sing the high part the same as the low part. It makes no difference. We're just going to make noise. Now that's important because people send out these prayer things and they want you to pray this piece of paper exactly as they said it. Have you ever got one? You know you have. Churches print them out, ministries pass them out, and I'm sitting here and I'm binding this and I'm loosening the president and I'm doing this and I, you know whatever it is. Or you're agreeing for the new congress, the, this, the new thing to get paid for. You know what it is. Or we're a church of a thousand strong and we grow in the Lord. No, 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 no. Call it confessions. The first church I ever went to that did that, I thought it was real, and I thought, I thought a thousand people looked bigger than this. They probably had two or three hundred people, but they were confessing from up front. We all read it together, off the bulletin that we're a church, a thriving church of a thousand people, and I didn't know what we was talking about. But so I wasn't agreeing with them, was I? I was just what? See, I, I, I'll say it this way: we can get the hymn out. That's farther along. Oh, dear Lord, I don't know if I want to sing farther along. Uh, but if we did, some of y'all would be singing and what I'd be doing would be mouthing words. You ever sat in church and mouthed the words? Because I hum sometimes because I don't know what exactly they're saying. And, or I know the first verse to the hymn, but I sure can't tell you the fourth or fifth verse. And I'm over here going... Nah, 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 nah. But so, so it's, it's more than getting somebody to mouth the same words. In fact, you don't even have to have exactly the same words. It's to be in harmony with. It's to pray <laughs> something that goes with, that accompanies. Okay? Well, for example, uh, you could have people singing a cappella and some people singing the words and some people's kind of making the beat behind it and somebody singing the oohs and the ahs. And so you have this whole choir type thing of music coming out and it's in harmony. It all goes together. So it's not you get somebody to pray the exact words because sometimes we don't know the exact words. Okay, what I'm saying, we're going to talk about agreeing prayer. Okay, but it's, it's harmonious. But can you see the harm, harmony does not mean that it's all the same pitch. The other person may not be as into it as you are. They may be singing solo and you're just doing the other part. Sometimes you're the solo part of the prayer and, and you're the accompaniment. And sometimes it's the other way. They have the faith and you're accompanying. The, you see what I'm saying? It's a huge difference. You try to get everybody the same fever pitch or everybody the same note at the same time in prayer. And we're all different and the Holy Spirit moves on us differently. And I, you might pray a prayer that lasts five minutes and I might really agree with the first two minutes of it, that piece. And then you may have lost me. You may have went to, it ain't probable and ain't practical and I don't even think God will do that over here. You done went four or five places. You'd have done better to, to sing something we could sing together before you hit the high part. And then sang another song for yourself, you know, and maybe I could go, have, is this music part confusing us? So what we're saying is, is that it means harmonious in the sense that it's in accord together, it's suitable, it concurs. I mean, we ain't got a Congo beat going on Amazing Grace when somebody's playing the organ. Okay, it wouldn't, it'd be great by itself, but it doesn't go together. And so... If, if we're agreeing for the person to live and, and you're sitting across there secretly believing they die easily, you're not in agreement. Amen? So your fallback is, uh, His will be done. <laughs> and then you're mad at Him because they died. So we're not singing the same song. How do we find the song? We have to get words that are in agreement. One of the things to agree on is what the Word of God says. You pray for somebody to be 
Satan and says, Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be safe. safe. We're going to agree that he's going to call on the name of the Lord. Amen. See, that would be something we could be harmonious Amen. about. But then your practical part goes, I just doubt he's going to do that. He ain't never called on the Lord yet so far. And so you talk yourself out of, as opposed to uh, the Bible says that uh, believers lay hands on the sick and they shall recover we'll sing that and whatever god gives you to pray with that but don't get halfway through the song and start to start start singing how impossible it is when you just got through asking him that believers lay hands on the sick and they shall recover and oh god if he doesn't recover that he would learn from his mistakes now see that does not you're singing a different song Okay, so we want to get on the same song and believers lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That God forgives all of my iniquities and he heals all of my diseases and redeems my life from destruction. Oh, I was on. Renews my strength like an eagle and fills my mouth with good things so my strength is renewed like an eagle. So we want to pray the same thing. But sometimes I've got faith for one line and maybe you've got faith for the second line. We don't argue about... We get in harmony with it. Is that okay? And you're better off to get in harmony about uh, that God's going to send $10,000 than to sing in two separate songs believing for $10 million because that ain't practical and it ain't probable and you can't see how it could happen. So... If, you're not no longer singing the same song. You're not even in agreement with God. Your brain's done said, that's too big. That can't happen. See what our brain does. We don't want to do that, do we? Uh, but notice I want to show you the other part besides harmonize, and I want to show you how it operates. It operates, it says, to agree together. Notice this word right here. When you have a legal agreement, you stipulate. You, you stipulate who gets the car if there's a divorce. Who gets custody of the children. You go to court and you divide a business and they stipulate, well, you get this part and you get this part. Or when you start a business, you stipulate who does this and who does that and how decisions are made. Does one got, is it 50-50 or is it 51-49? Y'all do these things where you get married and stipulate a few things. This is, uh, this is what we, how does this work? Well, I understand. I understand. I'm not even going to go there. I see a woman binding that husband so he can't ever leave. But I said, you know. Oh, no. But, but now, see, it's a legal agreement. It's, it's a song, like in harmony, but it's a legal agreement. It, you, there's stipulations. Notice, is it suitable for both of you that's praying it? See, what does that mean? That means we have to come to the place where I've got at least this much that I can agree with you for because me just saying I agree is not the same thing. Or you just saying that you agree has got to be in accord. Of course, they were in one accord waiting for Jesus, but it needs to be suitable. Can we agree that this is suitable? I like that. What, what Now, do we know what suitable means? Well, if you, if somebody takes you to court, it's a law of what? Lawsuit. Is this legal? Is this binding? Will, will you be satisfied with this agreement? If you're not going to be satisfied with the agreement, don't sign on the bottom line. Okay? So we want to be, notice it's like a contract. I, to stipulate by compact, Mayflower Compact, for y'all that don't believe we're talking about those type of things. That was the first legal thing, binding thing in America, was the <clears throat> Mayflower Compact, how they were going to do things. So, see, did you ever realize that when you're praying together and going to agree with somebody that you're entering into a contract? And if it's not agreeable, don't enter in. Negotiate and find a place where you have faith because a mustard seed of faith is more powerful then a, a huge amount of hope or a huge amount of, well, if I ask real big, God will give me some of it and I'll have some. 
So you're not you're not negotiating uh, with you know trying to do that. What you're trying to do is come into a place where you can make an agreement. You can agree together on what you're praying for. Oh, that's what it means in the rest of it here. To agree to make a what? A bargain. Are you? Are we going to make a bargain? We're going to have to make a bargain if two or three agree on earth. Are, are we going to make a bargain? God's going to hear in heaven and he's going to honor what we agree to. Can we agree? So we have to find a place to agree. Well, uh, I want to pray that pain stops. Can I get an agreement on pain stopping? Well, if pain is hurting you, usually I can get people to come into agreement about pain. Now, some people want them to agree that they're going to be supernaturally healed at this divine moment and they'll never have to go back to the doctor. I don't know if that's probable, practical, possible, quote-unquote, that way, but I, if it even is, it's, can I believe that for them? Do you hear me? I can agree for pain to stop. It's a no-brainer because I've had pain. And I don't want to feel pain. And I think they'll agree with me that that is a starting point for the pain to go. If we can not sing the whole song, but just agree on the pain going, they'll get a miracle. But if we both have to agree that they'll never go back to the doctor, we're no longer in agreement. Because I don't know that. You see what I'm saying? I'm trying to make it simple, but I'm not trying to make it so that it's that it's too simple. Uh, so we'll make a, we'll do this. So there's nothing wrong with me praying that pain stops, and then when God takes the pain, now we pray a separate prayer. See, it's all right to pray separate prayers. You don't have to tie what you believe He can do with what you don't believe He can do in the same prayer. See, we divide it. Man, if you're trying to pray with somebody and they barely believe God does anything and you're trying to tell them that God will do anything, you need to agree on something that they can believe God will. You've got to get them in agreement too. It's not just about what you believe. And at certain moments, I mean, you might have the gift of faith and you can believe for anything, especially when it's the other person. When it's you, it's a different story. When it's you, it's like, well, this is different now because you're on the inside. But so it means to make a bargain, to make an agreement, to come into a reasoning process. And what we say, we're not trying to, to short God out. What we're actually doing is getting something we can really believe God for. And, and one time, you know, down through the years, you know, we get these ideas. We're supposed to pray for so much. And, you know, one time I was praying that God would send us 100 people and if several years ago, several places go, and God stopped me and said, where would you put them? And I think we seated probably 25 or 30 people. And oh, I thought, well, you're right. He said, so you're not in agreement with me. If, you, if you're in agreement with me, then you start to do things that are in agreement with me. Now, what would that practically be? If you're believing for 100 people, then you need to start working on praying for a place that would seat. Yeah. See, that part of the verse goes with the first part. Right. You start to take actions that go with or start, I want to be out of debt. Okay? And so what I need is $10,000. Well, okay, to get me out of debt at this moment, whatever that number would be. And then God may say, now, you know what you might need to pray for over here to go in harmony with that prayer is that you could make $10,000 more. Or you might get into harmony with that prayer. The next prayer might be how to cut 5000 You see what we're saying. As opposed to we put all of it in one prayer and I've got 100% faith for two parts of the prayer and no percent on this over here. And I'd really be shocked if God does that. And thank God He does shock me all the time because I sure didn't believe He was going to do that. I didn't know realistically, okay? And when we're talking about other people, it's different than us. But see, we don't even really know what we believe till God puts us on the money. 
But when you're dealing with other people in life and death situations, you have the power to bind it on earth and it's bound in heaven. Loose it and it's loose. But we've got to come into agreement on what we're doing or I'm binding it and they're setting it loose. And that's what we used to do in charismatic church is you bound it a while and if that didn't work, you loosed it a while. Or somebody would come up and bind it and three people later in the circle would loose it. You know, because we're just going to try everything because we don't got no confidence that any of it's going to work. We're just going to keep shooting till something falls. And then we go, whoo, that's the key. Just do everything. I prayed a prayer one time and I gave up completely of God ever hearing my prayer. And the next day God did it. So there for years I just would give up on everything because it worked. Was it true? Well, I didn't give up at first. I'd pray a long time and then just give up. God would do it. And I said, well, I got this down. Now you just got to get to the place where you really want it and then you just give up. There's people praying that right now. There's teaching on it. I was doing the home version. And one time it didn't work because I really hadn't gave up. I was just... Got to the situation. This is about the time where you give up and then you get it. You try to have a baby. Everybody tell you the same thing. We well, just give up and you'll get pregnant. I've been told that 10,000 times. Just give up. And the other people say, buy some baby clothes. Then you'll get pregnant. And neither one of them have worked for us in all these years. But people, that don't slow people down from coming to tell you that's what you need to. I've been told, get health insurance and then God will give you a child. That was in the 80s somebody told me that. minister told me that. You need to get health insurance. You need to have a savings account for the child ahead of time. You need to do this. You need to do that. You, we wasn't in agreement. Neither one. We wasn't on the same page. Are you on the same page? That's why you get on God's page. But it's a bargain. If it's got this deal, we're going to agree. We're going to agree. Well, I don't have enough faith for that. Well, let's agree that if God gave you the faith for it, you would use it. Boy, that's a prayer. We're going to agree that if, that if God gave you the faith to walk and you can't walk, would you use it? Would you use it for Him? See, sometimes people's mind is bound by, like I said, you have to lose them first. Their mind is bound by their experience. Their body's bound by their experience. And when rejection's had them all their life, it's very difficult for them to see themselves coming free so you these prayers you you want to find something they can sing you want to find something that they can bargain with we're not trying to bargain it out of god we're trying to come into a place of agreement but see i might want them to be totally free and never touch another drug in their life because that's the ultimate goal and i want to sing that song and i want to pray that prayer and nothing's keeping me from praying that prayer by myself you hear what I'm saying? But when I'm praying with the person, I, they got to get in a... And I may have to lower what I want to get to a... Maybe you want to sing in... Oh, what's a high key? What's a high key? Well, I don't know what a key is. Like a, B, C, D, E, F. Like a high C. High C. And man, they might be, you know, one of them... You know, the low guy in the gospel group. You know that... J.D. Summer and the Stamps or somebody. And we've got to find something that's what? Let's pick something that they're going to be able to touch God with. I'm going to help them touch God. That's agreement. Now, I'm helping them. They're helping me. Them trying to educate me about what I ought to be praying is not helping. You've ever had somebody do that? Some spiritual person educate you on what you ought to be praying for and you know that you ain't got faith for that, but you're still going to let somebody talk you into something that you can't do now you hear what I'm saying I'm not saying something God can't do I'm saying something that you're not at a level that somebody else is telling you to throw your medication away it'll show you have faith they might be ready to throw their medication away you may not and that's dumb that's just like they found a way to make it without breathing, but you haven't yet, so you need to quit breathing because they say they can. No, you better not. Most of those people telling you to throw their medicine away ain't never had cancer, ain't never been sick, ain't never had a life-threatening thing. There's somebody that just got this idea of, of, of mental things. If this is true, this is true. If this is true, that is true. And the truth is that it may take you some steps to get whole. It may take you some steps to get well. It may take some steps 
Amen? And so we want to get on there. Jesus came down to people's levels and he asked the blind man, what would you have me to do for you? Well, if they, 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 they wanted to see, didn't they? And so he met them on that level. But I bet you they had bigger problems than being able to see. I bet you they'd been bound up. I bet they had rejection and this and that. I bet they were depressed. I bet they had so many things wrong with their life. I bet their marriages was messed up. I bet they was having trouble paying their bills. I bet there's a hundred things that they could have asked for. But Jesus met them on what? On the one where they ask. And every time God answers on one level, your faith rises in every other level. Level. So the key to getting victory when you agree with people in prayer is to get on a place they can agree with you. You can't always make them come up to where you are, but you want to meet them. Amen? Amen. That's, you, so that they can receive. It's not so I can educate them, it's so they can receive. But if any two of you will agree, so that agreeing's a huge deal. And it's touching it's specific specific it's touching anything but so i have to bargain with them so to speak i have to bargain with myself i have to talk to the lord i have to see we say i'm coming into an agreement i believe that if i pray this this is going to happen i believe that god will do this do you believe god will do this if not we need to find something you believe god will do and then we can pray a separate prayer in a minute for something else but now I want to get touching just for a minute. Touching just means, I uh, better show it to you. Touching means all over. See what we're saying here? It's, it's all over. But so when you're saying touching a situation, it's talking about all the way around the situation. See what we're saying there? Touching anything. Uh, this is what? Touching. Uh, Any way around the circle. Well, if we don't know exactly how to pray in that, but we're going to pray for pain relief right now. We're going to pray that fever goes. We're going to pray that their immune system be strong. So that I can agree with that. So that's something I can pray. I can pray your, your immune system be strong. I can, I can believe that God will touch you and he'll change you. <laughs> and so, but it's on the whole situation. The thing. Because the thing is usually not what they tell you when they come in and say, I'm depressed. And when they come in and say, I'm addicted. When they come in and say, you know, I've got this problem and I don't want to live anymore. The, man, you're talking about a whole ball of stuff. See, all around it. That's a powerful word. All around it, all the different ways that it comes. I mean, the depression is sparked by this one time and that another time and this another time. And it's, you Now, we're going to see what I'm saying. But it's in any place, anything. I, I like that thing. I know I'm not getting it across there very good. But it's the whole circle of the matter. It's the part you can see. It's the part you can't see. If you'll agree on earth touching any thing, any part of the problem, that's a good word. Because, see, they might tell you what I really need is this. And the Holy Spirit might be moving to you. No, not what you really need is not that. What you really need is... Oh, but that's not hurting. That's the root. Yeah, but that's the root. No, no, I don't think that's the problem. Well, it is. Six months later, you might find out it was the problem. God wants to agree, not just on what they want to talk about, but on any part of their problem. Amen? Is that okay if I lost y'all? Uh, so it's in any part of it. Anything. Because so many times, it's touching. He wants to agree as touching. I always have her touch me, and we always do that. We always say, as touching anything, as part of the verse, it works for us. Touching. And I like it when you lay hands on people. I agree, touching. But it really means God touching any part of the situation, what you can see above surface, below surface, and anything. i got to get anything out here. Uh, any's going to mean the same word. <laughs> it's going gonna, it's gonna to mean all and any, like the scripture says we've done before. We're all and every. It means of every kind and any kind. It's any one. It's the every bit. It's any part of 
but it means all any situation any situation whosoever whatsoever individually each every any all whole everyone all things everything so the scripture is it says so if we'll agree touching any i gotta get thing out for you uh thing is a big word too though any affair any affair okay by extension any object any business matter hmm anything and work in fact this word is used in other places as works when it says my god shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory in christ jesus the word needs there is almost the same exact word it's any affair any business any that kind of thing so we think you know he's going to supply all my needs no he's going to supply anything that you need but it can't any affair because well, well i like that i go out there and i think man i didn't know how to i didn't know how i got into this but he promised to take care of it. Any business, any situation, and my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. It's, so, And that's a thing right there. It's a, anything. It's a deed. It's something that you do. And they shall ask, and the word ask means to pray, crave, or beg. It's got some, and I can show you that, but I want to show you the done part. The done is the word that really blesses me so much. And, and this goes to the root of it. Is it possible? Is it probable? Is it practical? Okay? Can he? Could he? Would he? Okay? You laugh at that. Somebody made a song like that that I knew and they was driving a BMW and I'm not. Can he? Could he? Would he? Should he? Can he? Could he? Would he? Yes, he can. He could. He wouldn't. He did. <laughs> Made fun of the song himself and didn't care for it, but he's driving a convertible BMW and his wife was too. And you go, huh. The pastor's wife wanted to sing it at church and he was embarrassed about it because he liked worship music and things like that. What was he making money doing? Southern Gospel. Can he, could he, would he, did he, can he, could he, would, yes he can, he could he, would, and he did. Now, notice what it says. Is it possible? Is it probable? Is it practical? Look what the word means. It's done. We think we know what done means. God's going to hear in heaven and it shall be what? Done. done. And look at what it means. It means to cause to be. It doesn't mean it has to be already. See, things that are there already are possible. You understand what I'm saying? You don't have to pray that they'll make a a, a, a new uh, whatever somebody drives. I don't know why nobody drives. Uh, a new, uh, well, what do you drive? Somebody give me a, what is yours, a Focus? A Ford Focus? Uh, we don't have to, to, it's not impossible to have a Ford Focus because what? There, uh, what are, is it fusion? A fusion? Because there's one right out there. We don't have to say. So a, a Ford Fusion is possible. Is that okay? I'm trying to use something. I cleaned a Maserati the other day. So Maseratis are possible. I may not have one, but God wouldn't have to go make one. Right? Uh, what do you drive? Yeah, I don't remember what it is. It's a Nissan or? You don't know either. It's a rogue. Well, so we don't have to. We don't have to agree. I've got a Dodge truck out here. We don't have to agree, and God have to make. God don't have to make the answer to my prayer. It's already what in the earth realm. Now, this is powerful. Now I'm just using. The, so if you're if you're believing for a, a, a couch, man, couches are in the earth realm. Okay. A dog, man, there's a dog in the earth realm. You see what we're saying? It's here. What the verse is telling us is that God will hear from heaven, and even if it's not here, He'll cause it to be. He will generate one. Think about that. He'll genesis one. So, is it possible? See, that's why it's not my job to decide if it's possible. 
because God can make one if we'll just agree on it. If we'll agree on a new hip, He'll make one. You can't just go down here and buy one. I got that cranky little replacement one that you got the commercial on. If your if your replacement hip did this, you might get a settlement. No, he can what? Generate one. If there's not a person like you're praying for him to send to you, he can make one. He can generate one. He can. He can make them a new creation in Christ. He can turn them into. See, you see what we're saying. It's, he will generate. That's so much more powerful than it'll be done. He can generate a will to not smoke. He can generate a will to grow. He can generate. If there's not one available, he can make one. But so if I'm praying that you'll be able to find a, a brand new Ford Pinto, you're going to be in trouble. They're not making new Ford Pintos that I know of. They're gone. But if you pray for one hard enough and agree long enough, he can make you one if he wanted to. You know, huh? And he can find you one, but sometimes sure he can. Way out. And so, because we're, it's impossible for us to find one. Now I agree with that because that's a powerful word. We the desires of your heart. I have desires, and I'll, I'll desire something, and sometimes I'll pray for it, and sometimes I'll desire it. And, you know, even just desiring it stuff shows up where I wanted one five years ago. And here's one in the box looking in front of me. This little stand that this sets on. Nelda got this for $5, and a little thing the laptop stands on. I wanted to get another one for the one back there. They're over $30. I'm not giving $30 for one. I walked into place yesterday and, and there was one similar that'll do the exact same thing and it was five dollars in the box. First thing I did was put it in my buggy. <laughs> we we shopped too long and the price went down to three dollars. After a certain time the price goes down. <laughs> so now I know that you gotta get in there and put all the stuff in your buggy and walk around for a couple of hours till the price falls. <laughs> Where was this? <laughs> that, that treasure hunt place we go in Tullahoma. Oh, okay. oh no it wasn't, it was the other one in Tullahoma. She knows I don't know. But it's funny though, see now I learned a system. I just told her to handle my buggy. <laughs> Isn't that terrible? That's how people think. <laughs> but so I had a desire for it and I didn't have to order it, didn't have prayer. It just came. And it pleased me and it pleased God. And he if there wasn't a way for one to wind up in the box, he generated a way for it to wind up in the see what we're saying. So I can pray for you that your blood sugar would be normal. And if there isn't any way in the natural for it to happen, he can still generate it. So that's why we can't get our brain hung on what's possible when you're dealing with God. The only place we have to deal with what's possible is dealing with the other person to agree with you to get in a place where God can generate something for them. See what I'm saying? The key is to get them in the front. And then God can generate anything. He'll make it. Now think about that a minute. I need a replacement elbow. Well, they can get one off a dead body. I don't think so. There's something about that don't do nothing for me. Now I know we're in a, in a lifetime where we live now where everybody's an organ donor and everybody wants this and that. But I don't want somebody else's hair. I'll just stay the way I am. <laughs> Think about that a minute. Gross. Oh, it's a kidney. It's okay. Well, that's fine. You don't see it. I don't know, but I really don't want nobody else's eyes, tongue, face. I really don't want anybody else's. I'd rather God generate me. Amen. Because I serve the living and not the dead. Amen. But the best man can do is come up with an extra part that was off somebody that died. We'll take this and bolt it on you. I think I will let God generate me. See, can you come into agreement that God can generate? See, that's a way you start that get into a prayer of agreement. It bypasses all these other thoughts and says, God could sure make, he could make one, couldn't he? He made the heaven and the earth and the stars and the fish and the sea. And he made it the first time. Why couldn't he make a replacement muscle? That shouldn't be a big deal. Why couldn't he make a ligament? Yes. Why couldn't he generate it? Why couldn't he make it? See, Jesus...
took that clay and that blind man's eye, he spit on it. Whew, you could say he's so, oh, that's a powerful word. Ooh. And he put that mud in there and he sent him to wash. And eyes generated. Yeah, I like that. I, I like that. DNA, I, I like it. I think you could preach a bunch on him spitting on it. Mm -hmm. It touched his tongue to start with, and that's where all the words come off mm -hmm. the tongue. And the saliva goes with it, man. That's all being able to digest all the Word of God, you know, because that's what part of saliva does is help yes. you take what's there and it assesses it into your body so that yes. you can possess what you eat, you know. I mean, there's a power, oh, there's a lot in it. Then we miss it when we say he just spat on the ground. No, he he didn't have a, some phlegm in his throat and have to clear his throat and decide to use it as part of the process. That ain't what he did. I mean, he was creative involved. I love the DNA in it. And yeah, but there's so many. Isn't that powerful though? He can make. Yes, he can. He can make feet. He can make legs. He can make that little spot that goes between your vertebrae. Mm -hmm. Amen. He can do all of those things. We had a prayer request coming this morning for shoulder pain. He can make whatever it takes. See, I may not be able to agree exactly that he's going to do the dig -dig 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 without a word of knowledge because I don't know all them little pieces. But I do know, see, anything takes the whole circle. And I, he can recreate. You might have pain here, but it's because the muscle down here at this part's out of whack. And it's pulling on it funny. And we see, well, I can't tell you all that. I'm not a chiropractor. I'm not anything. But I can feel that when I when he started. That's why I used it for an example. And but now I can. I he can make it right. He can generate it. Now let's go back to money for a minute. I'm believing for supernatural debt reduction. But there ain't no more money in my house than there was. Okay. Now am I looking for me to be able to make it? Or am I, if it don't exist, if there ain't an extra 10 grand out here floating around, he can generate. Well, he could make some counterfeit money. I've heard people say God don't make money because it'd be counterfeit, but it's all his. That's right. Okay, it's all his. He sure knows how to make somebody have an extra 10 grand. He knows how to generate it. So, so see, there's this generating electricity that we have right this morning because it's generating somewhere. It exists in the natural like lightning bolts, but it's generating all the, off the water dams or off the nuclear plant or off of whatever their, whatever our electricity comes from. It's generated. But notice it will become. It will come into... Isn't that something? That God will hear in heaven and it will come into being. See, now my problem is I used to have to believe it was already there. I used to have to believe it was already there, and that was so hard for me. Whatsoever you desire when you pray, believe you will receive it, and you shall have it. And that just boggled my mind so much because I would have to believe I had something I didn't have. Mm -hmm. But that's not really what it says. It says, whatsoever you desire when you pray, believe you receive it, and you shall have it. All my job was is to believe I receive it. I may mean, not have made it yet. And I shall have it. And ordering from Amazon has cured me of ever doubting that anymore. I believe I receive it. I paid for it. It's coming. I watch for it now to come. But it's mine. I paid for it. It's supposed to be here Wednesday. It's Say, I have faith. I mean, used with great latitude, literally, figuratively. Uh, be assembled. It may, it, may, it may be an assembled in the universe right now. It may be assembling on the earth right now. God may be putting it together like Legos right now. He's answering my thing, and he's putting it together for me. He's putting it together for you. I mean, it's being brought to pass. It's coming to pass. I like this one. It's continuing to work. Man, just because I ain't got it don't mean they ain't assembling, putting the tires on it right now down there at the tire place, getting ready. It's coming my direction, getting ready to roll. They've installed the engine, brought to pass, continue. Uh, and, of course, you know, if, you, if you're getting rid of it, it goes the other way. It'd be divided, be done. Oh, I like that. Oh, to, the process be ended, uh, to finish. I like all those words there. Whew, that's a powerful word. 
grow, happen, be kept, be made, be married, be ordained. <laughs> when, when God does it, it's ordained for it to happen. I see him got used wax up there somewhere. That's funny. Uh, but I just want you to see that that's what it says. It says, will be done of my Father, which is in heaven. Now, we've done all that so that we can pray. We've done all that so that we can pray. And it's 1021. If we pray five or ten minutes, we'll be right on time. And uh, we'll be just fine. But the idea is to find a place that we can agree with God. And find a place that we can agree with one another. Because this was the last verse, and I didn't get it. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst. And people say, well, what if you pray something crazy? It's hard to pray something crazy when he's in the midst. Amen. See, that's the, that goes all three of them go together. Yeah. Because he's here. And where God is, all things are possible. Father, I pray for people watching online that all things are possible for them, that you would meet them where they are, that you would generate for them what they have need of in the powerful name of Jesus.